own it. Sorry. It's so good to have you in the studio. Rav and I are massive fans Huge of you. Huge fans. And the responder. <laughs> <laughs> we love it, Liv. <laughs> but the reception has been incredible, hasn't it? You must be over the moon. Mate, I cannot believe the way it took off. We, we literally, we just thought we were going to be like this little... Stuart Little, you know, on BBC Two, hidden away after Newsnight, and it, we went global. Yeah. It's crazy, you know, Freeman, like, sold the show, and it just did really well, you know. Worldwide. Well, thank you. Good yeah, yeah. for you. But you've got a lot of experience, and a lot of that has come from the police. So tell yeah. us about your time in the police as a cop. Well, um, oh, God. Uh, how long have you got? It was, um, I basically, uh, I worked as a response it's a yeah. funny thing for me, because I, I never really wanted to be a copy, you know, look at me, I'm gorgeous, look at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still are, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> That's what being in a police yeah. uh, No, I joined, and um, I uh, I worked for response, basically, my entire career, but I never wanted to be a copy. Mm. But I absolutely loved it to start with. Mm. But then I think as time went on, it kind of just burned me out more than anything, you know, and you don't notice it happening until afterwards. Yeah. Um, and this is the result. <laughs> but this is the thing with the drama, it very much reflects those mental struggles that officers can face when they're on the job, and I'm sure for you, writing that, you were able to really resonate with, with that. I mean, that, that, that's why I wanted to write it, you know, it's not just Bobby's, it's, it's anyone who works in the emergency services, really, We're, everyone, it it's, takes such a toll, you know, you, you, the, the guys who come on the show, you know, and talk to you, the men and women who, who, who are out there doing the job now, Oh, God, you know, it makes you feel so humble, like, looking at, at what they're dealing with. And they're taking it home, yeah. constantly going home, constantly carrying it around with them, you know. So, for me, it was a little bit of therapy, really, writing the show, to be honest with you. The next one's about the trauma a writer goes through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, Tony, it is, it is a hard job on that on the front. I mean, something I've done, you've both done it together, but we've done it a few years ago. Do you think the chat around mental health now in the forces is, is better, in a better place than where it was? Yeah, I, I definitely think it's improved. I mean, it, it you know, for instance, look, Merseyside Police asked me in um, to talk to recruits. I always, I've always got to be careful I say talk to recruits just in case it sounds like I've been summoned for something. But, uh, yeah, they asked me in to talk to recruits about mental health and, and how to deal with things and how not to deal with things, really, with me. Um, so, you know, uh, that was not a conversation that was happening when I was in the job. No. You know, and it's great to see that, you know, because obviously, if you want value for money from, you, from your staff, look after them. Make sure Absolutely. they're happy, make sure they stay, you know. And you can speak so powerfully about those experiences. You went through some really tough times. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. I mean, it broke me, the job. I ended up, like, living in my car with a dog, you know. Mm. It's, um, it's crazy that the toll it took on me, you know. Um, but you managed to get back on your feet, didn't you, with the help of, of some friends along yeah, the way? Yeah, well, my, my best mate reached out to me. It was crazy. He found out I was living. Because one of the things is, and, and you know, what I always like to to think is that by talking about it it'll make other people feel comfortable about mm. talking about it mm. because i was too embarrassed it was crazy i was too embarrassed to say i'm living in my car yeah so a mate of mine found out um come looking for me and um teddy you know gave me money to rent a place to live oh, and i got wow. back on my feet and that was that yeah. but there were yeah. obviously some some tough times that you've gone through and, and was that something that helped you actually write this brilliant uh, drama you know I'm not suggesting anyone goes out and has a nervous breakdown, but it definitely helped me. Something flipped in my head, and I'll never know what it was. I don't know, uh, you know, how it happened. I'd always wanted to be a writer as a kid. Mm -hmm. No idea how to do it, but that breakdown got me to that point, you know. Crazy. It's, it's so. amazing just reflecting on it all now. Where you are now. I, I, I've got to ask, oh, when series two happening? Great what? question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I keep asking myself. No, it, it, we're hoping to be the end of May. We're looking at the end of May. That's not long. Yeah, no, it isn't. Yeah, God, terrifying. I know, I know. Amazing. I better write it. You've got, yeah, you've got, yeah, you better get on with it. Get back home, Tony, get writing. Great series. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Tony.